It's time to break down the Buffalo Bills Week 14 opponent, the challenges they present, and what the Bills need to do to deal with them today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I am your host of Locked On Bills. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. This episode is brought to you by DoorDash. A few minutes ago, I placed my very own DoorDash order to get my favorite local meal from Smoke Pit here in Charlotte. It should be here before the show is over, so a big thank you to DoorDash for lunch. Place your order today using promo code LOCK23. Stay tuned later in the episode to hear more from our friends over at DoorDash. Well, folks, it's time to get ready for a big one. The Bills against the Chiefs. In week 14, we're all thinking about this Bills team going on a run, closing out the season with a bunch of wins, and backdooring into the playoffs and making some noise. Well, step one is this game against the Kansas City Chiefs. So we're going to break down the Chiefs from every angle. We'll talk about Patrick Mahomes, the offense, the defense, the keys for the Bills to win this football game, the whole nine yards here on the podcast. Let's get into it. The Bills on the road, week 14, to face the Chiefs. The game will be played on Sunday, December 10th at 4.25 p.m. Eastern time at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri. The game will be broadcasted on CBS. Jim Nance on the play-by-play, Tony Romo, the game analyst, and Tracy Wolfson, the sideline reporter. This will be the 54th all-time meeting between the Bills and the Chiefs. The Bills have a 28-24-1 record all-time against Kansas City. The Bills have won the last two years during the regular season in Kansas City, but they did have a playoff loss that we will not ever forget baked in between those two regular season wins at Arrowhead Stadium. The Bills enter this game 6-6. Six and six. The Chiefs are 8-4, and four, leading the AFC West. Their eight wins came against the Jaguars, Bears, Jets, Vikings, Broncos, Chargers, Dolphins, and Raiders. Their four losses have come against the Lions, Broncos, Eagles, and Packers. The Chiefs have actually lost two of their last three games. Head coach of the Chiefs is Andy Reid, 65 years old. He's in his 11th season with Kansas City and 25th overall season as an NFL head coach. I mean, this is a Hall of Fame coach. In 11 seasons so far in Kansas City, he's 125-49. and And then in Philadelphia, he was 130 93 and one, he's been to four Super Bowls. He's won two of them. It feels like a large percentage of the head coaches across the league are from his coaching tree. I mean, this man's contributions to the game over the last 25 years have been pretty special, and he'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer one day. The quarterback for the Chiefs, you know this guy, Patrick Mahomes, 28 years old, first-round pick back in 2017 out of Texas Tech the number 10 overall selection by the Kansas City Chiefs. He started 92 career regular season games to this point. The, the Chiefs have won 70 of those, so he's got a, a record. The Chiefs have a record of 72-20 and 20 when Patrick Mahomes is their starting quarterback. So far this season, statistically, he's having his worst season, and Patrick Mahomes, of course, sets a very high bar in terms of you know what a season should look like in terms of production. This year has been by far his lowest marks, or at least on pace to be his lowest marks. Uh, So far, he's completing 67.8% of his passes, 261 yards per game passing, 22 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, and a passer rating of 95.1. So far, that's the lowest passing yards per game, lowest touchdown percentage, highest interception percentage, lowest yards per attempt, and lowest passer rating of his legendary career to this point. We'll talk about his supporting cast and the offense 
uh, here as we move along this conversation. It's It's been really an interesting couple seasons since they moved on from Tyreek Hill. Of course, last year, uh, they won the Super Bowl, and they kind of figured it out, right, defensively playing a bunch of rookies, and then Mahomes carrying them on offense and um, making plays, right, and being productive. He's the NFL MVP. He was the Super Bowl MVP. And then they make a swap here at receiver. They let Juju Smith-Schuster walk in free agency. They draft Rasheed Rice. And I think they were counting on some development here, whether that's from Sky Moore or Kadarius Toney, uh, maybe getting a little bit more out of Marquez Valdez-Scantling. But they've made an interesting choice with their wide receiver core, and I think that's really what's taking away from Patrick Mahomes and his production. It's not that Mahomes is any less of a player. <laughs> this guy's as good as they come, right? I think he's the best player in the league. But I think the choices of their front office over the last couple of seasons – uh, with the receiver core, even with what they did recently with the offensive tackles. I don't think that's necessarily a, a correct decision that they've made um, kind of moving on from the tackles they had last year and bringing in expensive tackles that have not actually performed well. So a couple of miscalculations, I think, with their roster construction offensively when it comes to the tackle position and the wide receiver position that is taking away from Patrick Mahomes being the you know highly insane productive quarterback that he's proven himself to be so far in the NFL. Let's get into his his splits and his metrics over the last four games. We're at that point in the season where I really want to look at a four-game sample size, the most recent four-game sample size, and this is what Patrick Mahomes has been up to. His average time to throw, 3.01 seconds. That's 25th in the NFL. So this is not a, a quick-triggered quarterback. He really never has been. There's been times in his career where they've really schemed getting the ball out of his hands quicker. Uh, but Mahomes is still a creative playmaker that wants to extend plays, keep his eyes down the field, and you know hit some haymakers. Uh, but you know, 3.01 seconds is 25th in the NFL. When he gets the ball out in under 2.5 seconds, which happens uh, 41% of the time, he completes 77% of those passes for a passer rating of 104.4. Both of those numbers are actually in the top 10 of the NFL, so very good when he does play within structure and get the ball out quick. And, of course, this is a big screen team. We'll talk about that. But when he holds onto the ball for over two and a half seconds, which is 59% of the time, his completion percentage is 56, and his passer rating is only 84.8. And those numbers rank 17th and 18th in the NFL, respectively. So Mahomes wants to play a little bit off schedule, but he's having most of his success when he's playing within the structure of the offense. His average depth of target over the last four games, 7.2. Not very far. That's 24th in the NFL in terms of average depth of target. Only 10% of his throws are 20 yards or more down the field, which is 23rd in the NFL. And over the last four games, when Mahomes throws the ball 20 yards or more down the field, he's 2 of 14 for 52 yards, no touchdowns, and an interception. So the vertical passing game just has not been there for Patrick Mahomes this season, and especially over the last four games. When Mahomes is under pressure, which happens 35% of the time, uh, he's got a completion percentage of 50% and a passer rating of 71. And that's very much middle of the pack. 15th in completion percentage, 16th in passer rating under pressure. Usually Mahomes is a little better under pressure. When he's kept clean, 102.4 passer rating, that's seventh best in the NFL, and a completion percentage of 72, which is 14th best in the NFL. Play action, they are not doing that very often. 19% play action rate. 24th in terms of frequency. And what's interesting is Mahomes has not been very effective with play action, which is kind of a spot where you'd expect him to be very good. With play action, his passer rating only 77.7. That's 24th out of 32 quarterbacks in the NFL. His completion percentage only 64.3, which is 23rd. Now, with a, without play action, he's a little better. A 97.4 play action passer rating, or without play action, excuse me, without play action, 97.4 passer rating, that's 11th. Without play action, a 66.1% completion percentage, which is 12th. Screens, they are a big-time screen team. 16.7% of Patrick Mahomes' throws are screens. That is second most frequent in the NFL. Yards per attempt, 5.6 yards per attempt when they throw a screen pass, which is 14th. So you better be ready for the screen passes this week. All right, we're going to talk all about the rest of this offense, the defense, the keys for the Bills to win this game. That's all coming up here in just a moment. Stick with me. But, folks, I am obsessed with DoorDash. The convenience of DoorDash is simply 
unmatched. We're all busy, right? We're all wondering what we're going to make for dinner or when we're going to have time to get to the grocery store. You don't have to worry about that stuff. DoorDash will bring you groceries. They'll bring you food right to your front door. They'll bring you groceries just like you pick them up off the shelf for yourself. And they'll bring you food from your favorite local restaurants right to your front door. And that's what happened for me. I got my food from the smoke pit. I love ordering uh, barbecue. They got great barbecue slaw. They have amazing baked beans and uh, smoked sausage is unbelievable over at smoke pit. DoorDash brings it right to my front door. So stop worrying about What's for dinner? Stop worrying about when you get to the grocery store. Stop worrying if you need a snack. They'll get you something from the gas station. You want a Gatorade and a Milky Way? They'll bring it right to your front door. I got a deal here for you. Get 50% off up to a $10 value. When you spend $15 or more on your first order, when you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCKED23, subject to change, terms apply. Again, that's 50% off up to a $10 value. When you spend $15 or more on your first order, when you download the DoorDash app, and enter code LOCKED23. Subject to change, terms apply. The offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs is Matt Nagy. And Eric Bieniemy has been their offensive coordinator. Andy Reid's the play caller. And, of course, Matt Nagy was with Andy Reid, and then he went to be the head coach of the Bears. That really didn't work out. He came back to Kansas City. But their play caller is Andy Reid. Let's talk about the numbers for this Chiefs offense. That is still a solid offense, but maybe not where you expect to be a Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid offense to be. So far this year, they're scoring 23 points per game. That is 11th in the NFL. They're averaging 6.5 yards per pass. That's 10th. 4.3 yards per rush. That's 10th. A turnover percentage of 14.5% of drives. That's 8th. And a score percentage, they score on 41.1% of drives. That is seventh. Situationally, 47% on third down. That's fourth in the NFL. And they score a touchdown 57% of their red zone trips, which is 13th in the NFL. So not a bad offense. Like, let's not get it twisted here. This isn't a this isn't a bad offense. It's right around kind of that top, right about 10, 10 to 15 range. Uh, so an above average offense, but again, maybe not what you'd expect from the Kansas City Chiefs. And I think that really comes down to, like I mentioned, underwhelming options at wide receiver and offensive tackle. So let's talk about these wide receivers. Their number one receiver, not not option in the passing game. We know that's Travis Kelsey. Their top receiver of late has been Rasheed Rice, a, a rookie uh, out of SMU, um, skilled player, very productive player at SMU. He fell a little bit in the draft and he's working out pretty well for the Chiefs. He's been he's been their most targeted player over the last four games. So this is kind of their guy. He's been very good after the catch. And um, I think that they're going to funnel a lot of plays to Rasheed Rice. Now after him, just a bunch of guys here. Justin Watson, big bodied receiver, possession style guy. Marquez Valdez Scantling, who I'm pretty sure is their highest paid receiver. High variance guy, more of a straight line vertical threat that is inconsistent at the catch point. Sky Moore, a recent second round pick that, you know, you watched him in college. You thought you saw a route runner and a guy that can win after the catch, had some versatility, had some athleticism, hasn't really developed to this point. And then Kadarius Toney, uh, former first round pick of the Giants, who they traded for last year, he's on the team. He's just not really been involved. He only has three targets over the last four games. Uh, so that's their wide receiver core at tight end. It's Travis Kelsey. You know all about this guy. Um, still, Still the best, right? Still one of the most dynamic tight ends in the game right now. Uh, Arguably the best tight end in the history of the game. Just has an unbelievable ability to find space, catch the football, turn and run. You know, I, I, you just watch him and and it's frustrating because you're like, how is nobody on this guy, right? How are they not covering this guy? Well, it's because he knows how to find space, right? He's a zone buster through and through and just has such a feel for getting into space. And of course, his relationship with Patrick Mahomes is pretty special when it comes to a quarterback uh, tight end relationship. Their backup tight end's a good one. I really like Noah Gray. They should get him involved a little bit more. Uh, multifaceted player can block, can flex out, can can catch the football. I think you got to pay attention to that guy. He's not been overly productive, but I think he's a potent number two tight end. A running back, Isaiah Pacheco, their lead running back. He did not practice on Wednesday due to a shoulder injury, so I'm not sure about his overall status. That'll be something to monitor throughout the course of the week, but. 
he's a fun player to watch. I mean, you like guys that run angry. I mean, that, that's what this guy does. He, he, he is, he's a mad runner and he's tough to tackle. And he's when he, when he mashes the turbo button and he gets on his horse, this guy's got breakaway speed. He, you can just tell he moves a little bit different. So physical, angry runner that has speed and he's, he's a lot to deal with. And then, uh, their depth at running back, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, first round pick, who's not really panned out, more of a depth guy for them that doesn't get much run in this offense. And then Jarek McKinnon, who feels like when they sprinkle him in, he does some good things and they're pretty choosy about his involvement in the offense. But whenever he gets the ball, he seems pretty dangerous to me. Obviously, if Pacheco can't go, it'll be the Clyde Edwards Hilaire show. And of course, Jarek McKinnon would it, it probably get some more opportunities as well. So Pacheco's status, something to monitor. This week, when it comes to um, the target distribution, over the last four games, this is how they've dispersed the targets. Rasheed Rice, 26 targets. That's number one. Travis Kelsey, number two at 24. Uh, Watson has 19 targets. That's third. MVS has 12. That's fourth. Pacheco, 11. That's fifth. Sky Moore, ninth. That's sixth. Noah Gray, eight. That's seventh. Jarek McKinnon, five. That's eighth. And then uh, Kadarius Tony is uh, number nine here with three targets. So it's it's Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey and and Jalen Watson or excuse me Justin Watson. And then you know there's there's just a lot of different players that go to the football with right. We've talked about some teams this year like Philly. They throw the ball to AJ Brown and Devonta Smith, and that's about it. Right. This is a, a team that disperses the football around quite a bit. So you kind of have to account for a lot of different players. The offensive line is interesting. Their left tackle likely to be Wanye Morris this week. Uh, Donovan Smith is their preferred starting left tackle. He was injured, neck injury. I don't think the expectation is that he's going to play this week, so they'll turn to Wanye Morris, uh, who will be making his first career start. Toolsy mid-round pick out of Oklahoma. Um, I thought he had developmental starter appeal. I'm sure this is a little early for him to have to step into the lineup, uh, but you certainly want to try to take advantage of that if you're the Bills. They got the best interior offensive line in football. Left guard, Joe Tooney. Center, Creed Humphrey. Right guard, Trey Smith. Those guys are unbelievable. Uh, good pass blockers, good run blockers. They can move. They get out in front of plays in the screen game. They're, that's that's just the best middle three in the league. Their right tackle, Jawan Taylor. They just paid him a big contract, $20 million a season. And he's been very inconsistent, uh, whether it's penalties, um, holding and offsides, giving up some pressures. His adjustment has been uh, – it's been an adjustment. I think that's the best way to put it at right tackle. So a handsomely paid guy that's not necessarily living up to that contract. So the, the problems here on the O-line are the tackles. The interiors is as good as they come in the entire NFL. So what are my keys for the Bills on defense against the Chiefs on offense? Well, number one is pressure Patrick Mahomes. Pressure him. We went through the splits at the beginning of this conversation. When he holds onto the ball and when he's pressured, his effectiveness comes down and you know that he's going to be wanted he's going to want to extend plays and and look for some haymakers and do all the creative things that Patrick Mahomes does and so you got to get pressure and you got to affect him right and we've seen the Bills affect Patrick Mahomes but not not able to tackle him and get him down you're going to have to contain him and get him on the ground and really try to affect him the best you can but pressure on Patrick Mahomes absolutely critical in this game and you want to do that without blitzing right Patrick Mahomes historically great against the blitz. They have a, a really deep, creative um, screen game. So be be aware of all that. Number two is stay disciplined in coverage. This is, this is the hard part about playing Patrick Mahomes is that you have to cover for longer. And not only is he very good working off script and, and being creative with how he makes plays and throwing the football, but his eye manipulation is really special. And his ability to move a defender out of his zone and then that space that is vacated, he throws the ball to somebody that's running into it. So you got to stay disciplined. You got to have good eye discipline on defense, but you got to cover for longer. So you need to get pressure and you got to cover for longer. It's a tough assignment. Number three is tackle and get population to the football. This is a pretty basic principle of playing defense, but it, it really matters in a game like this. We talked about it. This is the second most frequent screen team in the NFL. They're going to they're gonna throw screens. And you got to make tackles. You got to get people to the football and make tackles. Right now, over the last four games, Rasheed Rice averaging 8.8 .8 yards after catch per reception. Sky Moore, 7.4 yards after catch per reception. Travis Kelsey is probably the most dangerous yards after catch 
tight end in the history of the game. Pacheco, as a ball carrier and as a receiver, tough to bring down. You got to tackle well, and you got to get population to the football, so that way if you do fall off a tackle, you're not conceding another 10, 12, 15 yards. Get guys down when you got a chance to get a guy down. That, of course, includes Patrick Mahomes. They got a chance to sack that guy. Doesn't happen very often. Only sacked seven times in the last four games. And then lastly, win in the red zone. The Chiefs' red zone offense has been just okay. They score a touchdown 57% of the time, which is 13th in the NFL. They're going to make plays. They're, you know, That's going to happen. You're, they're very good at converting third downs. That This stuff happens. They're going to make some plays. But when it gets down to the red zone, can you bow up and keep touchdowns off the board and make them settle for field goals? I think that's part of your winning recipe on Sunday afternoon. All right, we're going to talk all about the Chiefs' defense, which has been really good this year against the Bills' offense, so stick with me. But i got to tell you about prize picks. Prize picks is the funnest, most exciting, easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. The format is incredible. It's just you against numbers. That's it. It's not you against thousands of other players, including Sharks, including pros. All you do is you select two or more players, you pick more or less on their projected stats, and you place your entry. That's it. doesn't take long. Picks can be made. In under a minute, and then when you win, the withdrawals are super, super quick. I also love with prize picks, you can cross-pollinate between sports. So maybe there's a few of the uh, the projections you want to work on for a football game. You can tie in some hockey, basketball, whatever you want to put together an entry that you really, really like. So go to prizepicks.com slash NFL and use code LOCKEDONNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com. Slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, folks, welcome back. I would like to take a second to invite you to join the Locked On Bills subtext community. We are having fun with that. Uh, here's what you get you get one on one text messaging with me. I send out updates with my first reaction to all major Bills news. And I give you my in-game text. So pretty much after every drive, I send out a text to everyone, letting you know what I'm thinking, what I'm seeing. So that's really, really cool. Plus, we added a Discord channel where we've got hundreds of Bills fans in there. We're talking Bills. We're talking Sabres. We're talking fitness, life, all kinds of stuff. NFL draft, uh, NFL in general. And that's been really cool. Plus, I do my film clips in there. So when I do my all 22 reviews, I spend all day dropping film clips in there with analysis in our Discord channel that you get as part of being a subtext subscriber. So check it out. There's a link in today's show notes to join the Locked On Bills subtext community. I've also uh, made the Discord available to the international audience. Unfortunately, the international audience is unable to join the subtext. Uh, just subtext doesn't work that out. But I can get you in our Discord. If you're interested in that, send me an email, joemarino65 at gmail.com. Tell me that you're interested in the Discord, and I will give you that information for you to be part of that. Uh, just like the folks that are in the subtext. So come on over, international fans. We want you to be part of the community as well. All right, the defensive coordinator for the Chiefs is Steve Spagnolo, 63 years old. Four, uh, is it 15? I think he's 15 seasons now as either an NFL defensive coordinator or head coach. He's really good. He's had a top 10 scoring defense in each of the last – or in three of the last four seasons. So top 10 scoring defense, three of the last four seasons. And the year that they didn't have a top 10 scoring defense was last year, and they won the Super Bowl, and they did it with a bunch of rookies on defense. So this guy is very, very good when it comes to defensive coordinating. Metrics here for the Chiefs defense, they allow 17 points per game, third best in the NFL, 297 yards per game, that's fourth best. So they're top four in both scoring and total defense. They allow 5.2 yards per pass, that's third best in the league. 4.6 yards per rush, that's 28th in the NFL. They get a turnover 11.4% of the time, that is 17th. And they've actually been on a little bit of a turnover slump. They have zero takeaways in the last two games. They played the Packers and the Raiders. And they've actually went five consecutive games without more than one takeaway, including none in the last two. So they're in a little bit of a turnover or a takeaway slump. And for the Bills, you certainly hope that continues. Third down, they're third, they give up a conversion 38%, which is 13th. Uh, their red zone touchdown percentage is interesting, 58.8%, which is 21st. You kind of expect a team that is this good at limiting points, that's this good at limiting yards, 
to be a little better on third downs and red zone. Uh, they blitz a lot. 35% of the time they blitz. That's sixth highest in the NFL. And they get a lot of pressure. 27% pressure rate, uh, which is second best, in the, second best in the NFL. Their sack rate is 9.3%, which is fifth best in the NFL. Let's talk about this defensive personnel. On the edge, uh, George Karloftis, uh, second-year player, was a first-round pick in 2022. He's really taken a step. Gets a lot of pressure. High-motor guy. Re, you know, just a relentless football player. I don't know that he's got it all figured out technically, but this guy plays hard. He's athletic and he's powerful. Uh, he's complimented by Mike Dana, who I think has been just a, a quietly solid player for them for a number of years. Um, can rush the passer, can defend the run. He's where he's supposed to be. He doesn't get outworked for his gap. He's a, one of my favorite rotational defensive linemen in the league. Charles Amenehue, big toolsy defensive end, uh, has bounced around a little bit for his career, but he's been flashy. Uh, solid player, but I think maybe they expected a little bit more from him when they gave him a pretty sizable contract this offseason. And then their first round pick from this year, Felix and Duque Uzoma. Uh, he plays on the edge for them only 16 snaps over the last four games. So this is really about Karloftis, Dana, Amenahue on the edge. On the interior, they got that Chris Jones guy. You know about him, right? One of the best defensive tackles in the game, he's a problem, right? We know that. That's not hard to figure out. You watch the Chiefs on defense, you know about Chris Jones. He's unbelievable. Uh, his running mates, Derek Noddy, big nose tackle. I don't know. I think the last two years he's been down. Uh, he used to be one of my favorite run-stopping uh, one techs in the league. I think he's been a little bit underwhelming over the last couple of years. And then they have Tershawn Wharton, who I think has been a nice rotational player, and Matt Dickerson gets a little bit of run as well. Linebacker is going to be interesting. Uh, will Nick Bolton play this week? He practiced in full on Wednesday. I'm recording this before the Thursday practice, so I don't know what the result is there. Uh, but if he can come back, he's had a wrist injury and hasn't played in several weeks. That'd be a big boost to their defense. He's a good downhill uh, Mike linebacker, you know, plays hard, uh, hard, hot motor type guy, can blitz. I don't know that he's great in coverage, but he can handle some, you know, shallow zones and that type of stuff. That'd be a big boost to their defense, especially because. His backup, Drew Tranquil, uh, had a concussion uh, against the Packers. Not sure if he'll clear or not, uh, but with if, if he can't go, if, if both of those guys can't go, Bolton and Tranquil, they're going to be down to like Jack Cochran uh, as, as their starting Mike linebacker. Willie Gay is kind of their matchup player, speedy athletic linebacker. And then Leo Chennault is a recent fairly high pick out of Wisconsin. That's a very good run defender, blitzer. I could see them having a role from him, uh, maybe spying Josh Allen a little bit. Keep your eye on Leo Chanel. I think they're going to have some creative stuff up their sleeve uh, for the Bills. At corner, two studs here in Legereus Sneed and Trent McDuffie. Uh, from what I understand, Legereus Sneed, he follows the other team's top receiver, so I'm sure you're going to see him on digs. And then Trent McDuffie uh, is oftentimes the slot. Uh, he could play outside, but they want probably him to be in the slot, Sneed to follow digs, and then they will. Uh, the platoon, Jalen Watson and Josh Williams, who are both longer corners, physical longer corners, that platoon at that other spot, I'm sure that's the player they're going to want to put on Gabe Davis. Uh, so two of those guys there, McDuffie and Sneed, very, very good uh, cornerbacks. And then at safety, Justin Reed's the starter um, that they would like to have back there. And then his running mate is Ben Brian Cook, who's who's injured. He won't play in this game. So they're going to turn into to, to Mike Edwards, free agent that came over from Tampa Bay. He's been a played a lot of football. It's not like this is a guy who's out of nowhere that's going to have to play. He's played a lot, uh, but I'm not, not sure he's been a super consistent player. Watching him this year, tackling issues galore. Uh, so that'll be a, a potential opportunity there for you to attack him. And they'll also mix in Chamari Connor, young player out of Virginia Tech. Uh, can play safety, can play slot. Um, they can do a lot of different things with him. So if the Bills go with some spread packages and um, – some lighter personnel. I think you can see Shamari Connor get some opportunity. So what are the keys for the Bills on offense against this Chiefs defense? Well, number one I have down is protection schemes. You know, they're they're a blitz aggressive team. They've got some good blitzers uh, in Leo Chanel. Trent McDuffie can blitz, but also good rush players in Chris Jones, George Karloftis, Mike Dana. You know, they're going to be creative with how they attack the pocket. So you got to – your protection schemes have to hold up, and you got to win one-on-one. -on -one. That's number one for me. And, and fortunately, the Bills' pass protection has been good this year. And there's been some challenges that I've been concerned about, and the Bills have actually met that moment over and over again this year, most recently against Philadelphia uh, before the bye. 
I think number two is you got to attack the middle of the field in the passing game. Now, this is a big Dalton Kincaid game for me. Uh, some good opportunities against their linebackers, against Mike Edwards, against Justin Reed. If you get some isolated opportunities there, you got to go after it. So attack the middle of the field, Khalil Shakir, Dalton Kincaid, those guys should be busy on Sunday afternoon. Number three I have written down, it would be nice if Gabe Davis can win some one-on-ones because I think they're going to live with that. I think they're going to put Jalen Watson slash Josh Williams over top of him. And, you know, if Gabe can stack and get behind those guys, win down the field a little bit, that'd be, that'd be big for the Bills. I'm not calling for a lot of volume to Gabe Davis, but if he can have some wins, I think that would be important for the Bills on offense. And then lastly, and maybe this is number one, run the ball. Run the ball against this team. They're 28th in yards per carry allowed. They've allowed over 100 yards to seven consecutive opponents. And um, I think you're going to have some opportunities to work James Cook in this game. And so uh, I would also run Josh Allen. That would be a big part of my plan is testing this run defense and James Cook being a part of it, Josh Allen being a part of it. You know, this has got to have its stuff. And so Josh Allen should be willing to take off with the football. Special teams wise, they got the best punter in the game, Tommy Townsend. He's unbelievable. Kicks it high and far, very consistently. Um, literally, I think he's the best punter in the game. Harrison Bucker, veteran kicker, he's been perfect this year. 29 of 29 on extra points, 22 of 22 on field goals. So maybe he's due for a miss, but uh, he hadn't missed this year, and he's a long-term veteran that's been unbelievable for, for them. And uh, just an absolute – I think they signed him off the practice squad from the Panthers, and he's turned into like one of the best kickers in the game. And then their kick return, punt return situation has been a little bit unsettled this year. They've they've played a lot of different guys in that spot. Most recently, it's been Richie James as the kick returner and Kadarius Toney as the punt returner. So uh, those guys are pretty potent. Uh, James has a fair amount of experience, but neither guy is what I would label as uh, mistake-free, right? They're, those are guys that have a propensity to make a, a blunder or two. So I, I'm not sure how much you trust your – uh, special teams units this year. The Bills have not been good on special teams, but I don't think these are overwhelming options to deal with in the return game. So there you have it, folks. That's the Chiefs. Good football team. Um, maybe have a little bit different look and feel than they've had recently. They've lost two of their last three games. They're coming off of a loss. So are the Bills. You know, I think the Chiefs would would love to be the one seed, right? They have tiebreaker wins over Jacksonville and Miami. Um, and so it's an important game for them to do that, right? They don't want to have to go on the road in the playoffs. And then for the Bills, obviously, got to go on a run, and that starts with this game. So an important game for both teams. All right, folks, we'll have one more episode coming for you uh, this week. We'll give you my final thoughts on the game. We'll talk to Dr. Kyle Trimble of Banged Up Bills and, of course, my five predictions for Sunday. So don't miss anything. Would love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. And I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow.